Hello and welcome back to the iFox with Juice podcast. I am your host, Juice, and I'm here again with my co-host, Rena Parsegan. Rena, what's going on? Not much, Juice. How are you doing tonight? Uh, all right, all right. I hear the, the fires are pretty bad up there. Doing okay? Yeah, it's doing okay up here. Um, it's almost, what, two hours away, but you can really feel and smell the effects. Do you live more like... um? Like in a valley, like further down, is like the smoke going all down towards your area or something? Yeah, that's what it seems like because today is just the worst. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, a, I have a similar situation where I live, but luckily it uh, nothing's really come down my way after the weekend. So I hope yeah. everything gets better because, as everyone knows, California is a fucking hellhole right now. But we're going to do okay. At least, yeah. at least my girl, Reen, and yours truly are – Doing okay for the meantime, mm-hmm. but anyway, let's uh let's get straight into this uh MMA stuff because we have some shit to talk about, especially with um the guy that hasn't fought in um uh, a very long time. <laughs> he said that guy. Yeah, because I don't know. <laughs> I almost feel, and we have another guy to talk about too in another sport that also seems to. Like the attention. I don't know. So in case you haven't heard, news broke a few hours ago uh, by Brett Okamoto from ESPN that there's a, a fight in the wor- in the works between between Jorge Masvidal and Nick Diaz. And everyone seems to be very excited by not, you know, by this news right now. And I'm just here to say no, it's not gonna happen. Um, I don't know the details. And even if I did, I wouldn't believe him because it's Nick Diaz. And this is what Nick Diaz does, the, you know. Or maybe I should say what the UFC does because, you know, matchmaking, it always seems to be like a one-way thing. Um, am I being too conspiratorial, Rain? Am I just being too cynical? What do you think? What What do you think is the action? If you have to bet money right now, if you have to bet your house on it, that this fight will take place in March in Las Vegas, what do you think? Well, first of all, who hurt you? Know, who hurt you, Juice? <laughs> Nick Diaz is hurting me a lot. I'm in tears right now. Um, I hope it does happen. I mean, Brett Okamoto is tweeting about it, you know. So hopefully this is going to be the comeback fight and it leads to something else. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've i never been, you know, I've never not trusted Brett. He's very reliable. I believe everything he's saying. I just don't believe Nick. I mean, he can say whatever he wants, and he can have all these sources, and Masvidal on the UFC, and everyone could be on board. But, I mean, it was the same thing. Like, it, it was so funny. I was the first one to call it, too, that with uh, Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier. I mean, everyone thought – everyone was excited for that fight. Everyone thought it was going to happen. Poirier doesn't pull out too much, and Nate Diaz never does. But when Poirier pulled out, I was telling people, I'm like, I'm not worried that people aren't don't want to fight Diaz. People are jumping at the gun to fight Diaz. I'm worried he's not going to accept. And like a, a an hour later, after I tweeted that, Dana said that he's that he's not going to fight. And I told people, I'm like, I told you, that, like this is just. This is how Nate, and you know, it's a little bit different with Nate. He's made way more money because of the McGregor fights than his brother now. But still, I mean, it's that same mindset. And little brother Nate follows big brother Nick. So I don't see why it'd be any different with Nick, even if everything goes through. If I, I don't remember the last time that Masvidal pulled out of a fight. If this fight is set and it's official, I I see them getting to the fight, even if they're not healthy. I, I see it happening. I just, I don't know. I think Nick will get in trouble. He might get fucking arrested. He's going to fail another test. He's going to, you know, get in a brawl. I don't know. I just, I I can't rely on Nick Diaz. There's, there's nothing about him. There's nothing that he's done in the past, what, four or five years that makes me think that he's going to make it to this fight. Yeah, I, I think you're right because it's saying that it's going to be uh, March 2nd at UFC 235. And I'm thinking, well, is that too much time for Nick? I'm, to, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. You know? Well, like, like it, No, like it makes sense. Like he hasn't had a, a fight in a long time. So 
give him time to get in the gym. I mean, I, we know he's in shape. He's a triathlete. He's never going to, you know, he's never going to go full rampage status and gain 100 pounds between training camps and shit like that. But, you know, yeah, give, give him some more time to, to spar, to, to train properly. But Oh, no, my point is that's is that too much time for him to get in trouble? You're right. That was I, that was whole, my whole thing going into that's, it. Like, that's what I was I, gonna say too. Yeah, yeah. That's just way too much time for him to to be just sitting around. You know, if it was a quick turnaround, like maybe December, January, then that would be yeah. fine. But yeah, they should have right. given him like the like the DC Lewis treatment. Like y'all motherfuckers are fighting. Get in shape now. Yeah. Like, oh, just just you're gonna fight in a few weeks. So yeah, yeah. 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 So I think I think you're right that. He's not going to show up. It's not going to happen. But, I mean, Nick Diaz is also a wild horse. He's a wild horse that can't be tamed. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I, I mean. It's been I four assume, years. Four years. Like That's to a me, long time. To me, it would make more sense if we're talking about it just commercially. Maybe the the the, An- the Anaheim card, the dillashaw Cejudo fight, because, I mean, what a co-main event that would be. And. You know, at least Nick, he's he's from California. And he's always, you know, although it's Northern California, it's still, you know, he'd still have some, a lot of shine here. And then Masvidal has just a big fan base all over the country. So, yeah, that'd be sick. I, and, all right, if, if we're going to, since we went down the cynical route, I, let's just say for the sake of argument, you know, that the MMA gods bless us, this fight does happen. Jesus Christ, how fucking exciting that'll I know. be. That. I know. <laughs> I just, remember I texted you, I just choked on my water. And yeah. you're like, what? And I'm like, this. And I sent you that message from Bloody Elbow talking about this fight. And I, yeah, I'm like, excited. I, that's just I, it's Nick and Jorge too. Like that's gonna be a brawl. Yeah, and I'm yeah, it's uh I mean, cause even if it goes so quick because people forget Jorge is very smart and very well rounded. He can take him down, but he's not like a a boring wrestler on the ground. He always advances position. He's always going for crazy submissions. And Nick, I mean, if you play the right game with him, he can't be fucked with on the ground. So even if it goes to the ground, it'll be super exciting. Even if, and then you know, if it stays standing, it should just be madness. So. I think they'll talk so much shit just, you know, leading up to the fight and they'll just keep it standing and just put on a show because, yeah, those two guys, I know they're going to bring it. Yeah, that'll 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 for sure be like a fight of the year before it even happens. And then it's, there's certain fights every once in a while, like every once in a blue moon, there's a fight. As soon as it gets announced, you're like, I hope it happens. And if it does, it's going to be the fight of the year, night sometimes the fight of the year and then you get there and it's ex- everything you expected, if not more. And like, that's what I hope happens, but you know, I'm still gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm still going to be cynical. Cause as I said, Nick Diaz just can't be trusted, but I mean, I hope this means at the very least that Masvidal is ready to fight. Cause it's been a while for him too. So even if Nick's not on the table, hopefully they give him someone good too. I don't know who that'd be. Nate? But, they, wasn't that on the table? Or no, he wanted that fight, right? Who? Nate. Nate Jorge, did? Yeah, Jorge, Jorge um, and Nate. Didn't he say something about that? I just, oh, because when Dustin pulled out. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I don't think that would happen anyway. But even if they were to approach Nate, I'd assume he'd have that thing he always does with, you know, hey, that's my brother's fight. You know, they asked him to do it. I'm not going to take his fight, so... I, I just I don't see that happening. But um, well, Askren tweeted that he'll get the winner of it, but he's already scheduled to fight Lawler, so who knows at this point? But uh, it's just fun to talk about this because if not, I'm just gonna be, you know, just digging my heels in the ground that this isn't gonna happen until March comes around, and then maybe I can start to get excited, but. It's fun to speculate at the moment. Um, Another bullshit news, Floyd Mayweather (laughs) says that he's going to actually fight tension in his said three-round exhibition boxing rules match 
I guess he mentioned it to DMZ. I don't know if they caught him outside of some kind of restaurant or something, as they always do. Um, I don't know. From when I when I read the article, it seems like he just kept talking about money, which uh, I mean, obviously, no, no surprise. It's Mayweather, but it's just like, yeah, like I'm still gonna make money and I'm still gonna fight. It's not because I need it; it's just because I like it, and you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to basically, he basically says something along the lines, like, I'm going to dance with this kid for nine minutes. Like, it's almost like daddy's going to show his son how to box or something. It, it was the, it was the weirdest thing ever of how he explained it, at least the way I interpreted it. Um, I don't know if he came back to the States and then him or his manager started talking to, you know, the Japanese and, made some kind of agreement or, or actually finally uh, mashed out the rules, as we had said last week, that there was no there was no rule set. Maybe they finally said, hey, this is what we'll do it for, and maybe they agreed, or I don't know. Do you think he's just talking shit again just to stay in the spotlight? Because that is another thing of Mayweather that I think everyone knows him for his, you know, him being flamboyant, him being gaudy, him being – you know, all the things regarding the money, but the thing that Mayweather likes maybe as much as his undefeated record or his, his bank account is him being in the spotlight. So part of me thinks it's just him trying to stay there, but I mean, I guess it's possible that this fight is actually happening. I don't know if he's going to get the paycheck he's asking for, but he says he's going to get a lot of money. I wonder if that offer was on the table and he took it. Maybe it was enough. I don't know. It's he just completely changed. Changed his mind. Okay, it's on. It's going to be the best fight ever. Okay, cool. Highest paid match. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, the way he explained it, it wasn't even like get pumped, get psyched, it's happening. It was just like, oh, yeah, I just want to make more money, and this kid and this promotion is going to give it to me. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it, it's just it whatever, seem, right? It's it just so weird. <laughs> It didn't seem like it was promotional. It didn't seem like it was, you know, oh, you should take a look at this kid. This is a – because even with Connor, he did that for a minute. Like, hey, he didn't really talk him up, but he's just like, yeah, I'm a little bit old now. And Connor, yeah, he he hits hard. You never know. Mm -hmm. It was all bullshit, but at least he kind of put up the facade. But this is just like, oh, yeah, we're going to – as I said, he basically said, like, we're going to dance. Like, I'm just going to – Spar with the kid almost. It's just strange though. I mean, they had that conference with the pictures and it was, it seemed like a huge deal at the time and it got a lot of eyes on it. And now he's just, it just seems so nonchalant. Like, yeah, I'm going to fight yeah. this kid. Um, yeah. It's just not, you know, announced on TMZ. Like it's no big deal now. Yeah. Last week when all that stuff happened, um, I know people who don't follow fighting at all older people and it's just like oh yeah um did you hear that maybe he's gonna fight some some chinese guy and i'm like yeah but i don't know if that's true you shouldn't fully believe it and then the next day that whole thing happened but Mm -hmm. i don't know i i i I think if it does go down it'll be the most streamed thing ever um no one's gonna pay for it and they're gonna find the the part you know the pirated streams all over the goddamn internet but I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure you and I will watch it. It's it's just the way it'll go, you know. I I, I don't know. I don't know who's interested to pay anything for that, but who knows? Weirdest shit has happened, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. The whole just set up and him denying it, and then now it's going to happen. It, okay, we'll just we'll see what happens. If it happens, cool. I'm gonna watch it. I want to yeah. see what happens with this. No kicks? Okay, it's a boxing match. Cool. <laughs> and tension at the very least is, is heavy-handed for whatever that means, you know. So mm-hmm. nothing will happen, but I guess there's at least a threat there. I'm yeah, pretty you, sure. Yeah. You, you're going to be in Japan? Good luck. You yeah. might get knocked out. I don't know. Something might happen. The <laughs> <laughs> rules go out the door when you're in Japan. So Exactly. But be- you're going to sue us? Go for it. <laughs> That's a really good point. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting for sure. Yeah. 
All right, well, moving on to um, actual fights now. Uh, we're going to recap a little bit of uh, UFC Denver. And though it's, you know, almost a week now since it happened, I think it, it deserves a little reflecting on. Um, I have uh, some takes on it. Um, obviously, Yay Rodriguez and Korean Zombie fought in one of the craziest fights, definitely of the year, um, maybe ever. And it'll probably go down in the first 25 years of the UFC as one of the best, I'd have to say maybe top 30. I, I have no problem saying maybe one of the top 30 fights in the first of the past 25 years. Um, it was so insane. But I'm seeing people, everyone from, from fans and, and media saying it's the comeback of the year. It's the knockout of the year. It's the fight of the year. And of those three statements, I can only fully lock in knockout. I, I don't know how any other knockout can beat that. I think it's one of the greatest knockouts in MMA history, and I, and I don't mean that, you know, hyperbolic. I, I think that that I think that's as a objective as possible. That's one of the greatest knockouts I've ever seen. Um, but I'm not sure about fight of the year because. I can't get over how good uh, Romero versus Whitaker two was. Oh my god, I had I had that in my head too. We're on the same page with that. Yeah, I mean that fight was so. It, the thing about that fight was that this was fun. I I have no complaints about about Zombie and Rodriguez. You know the whole thing of him breaking his foot early in the fight and. You know, them being at altitude. I mean, it was a war. It was, these guys put everything on the table. But it's not even that Romero Whitaker was for a title. It was that Romero missed weight. And even that, that you know, adds a lot to it. He missed weight uh, for the second time in a row. Um, so he was at a bit of an advantage. Because I think with Romero, it's just that he just can't do it anymore. It's not so much that he's injured or anything like that. He's just too old now to to cut weight like that. So he was, a, you know, Whitaker was at a disadvantage in the start. He started kicking him in the knee the way that Romero did to him in the first fight. And just from the jump, you're like, ooh, this motherfucker's not. I mean, it's not even that he's asking for trouble. He's like, I'm going to get you back for what you did to me. And he boxes the shit out of him for two or three rounds. And then he gets wailed on, and it turned from a fun technical fight to just an all-out war. And it was so different from the first fight. You know, the first fight was what we expected. Whitaker outstriking and Romero trying to get the takedown. There was no takedowns in the second fight. This was just just a banger from, from beginning to end. And most people have called it the best middleweight fight of all time, and I... I I can't disagree with that. There was so much skill in there and so much heart as well. So I don't think I can look past Romero Whitaker. It's it's such a fun fight. I actually haven't seen it since that night, but I just remember how excited I was um, when it happened. I should go back and watch it now that I'm just now that I'm talking about it. Um, do you think that's your fight of the? If you had to book it right now, do you think that is your Fight of the year is Romero versus Whitaker too. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That was yes. I had that in my head. So yeah, everything you just said. Nice. Okay. Totally agree. That's, totally agree. <laughs> that's cool. That's good yeah. that we agree like that. Um, comeback. I I I can't think of a. It might win comeback of the year. I'm trying to think of a, of a better one right now. It doesn't. Nothing really comes to mind. No, I mean, he wasn't even supposed to be there, right? And then he had all uh, that drama. And... You mean uh, Rodriguez? Yeah. Or is that what we're talking about still? Or... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that some people are calling, yeah, comeback, Rodriguez, right? beating, yeah. yeah Rodriguez beating Zombie at the comeback of the year because he was losing like four rounds up until up until literally the last second. Mm-hmm. And then everything else he was going through and just the whole story is really good. It, it's I I you know what I wouldn't mind calling um I wouldn't mind calling Rodriguez the comeback fighter of the year although this will be his only fight of this year because of 
the adversity he went through of like almost every person, every MMA fan, every UFC fan hating him for, you know, he didn't want to take fights. And then that thing with the Zabit fight, the Zabit fight, not, you know, not happening and all his injuries and people saying that Frankie Edgar broke him and he's never the same again. He was all hype. And then to come back and do what he did on the 25th anniversary of the UFC in, you know, in altitude at Denver against one of the toughest motherfuckers to ever fight, maybe ever. Like, that's crazy. I don't mind calling him the comeback fighter of the year, even though he only had one fight. But as far as the comeback of the actual fight, I mean, I I guess I'll go with it just because I can't think of a better one. But I feel that once I, once we finish this, one's going to come to mind. Yeah. One minute left, though. No, one second. Was it one second? Oh, yes, that's right. One second. So it's at 4.59. I mean, it's funny, Demetrius Johnson. Oh my God. Demetrius Johnson just left, and he held that record that that'll never be beaten. It can only be tied. Well, it was tied, and it was by a knockout, not a submission. And it was one of the craziest knockouts ever. It wasn't, you know, an overhand right that a guy just, you know, just put his hand down for a second. They were wailing on each other. And the last thing that, you know, nobody ever thought that this guy would throw, he just ran right into. It wasn't that he just got caught. He ran into it to something that nobody would ever thought would even be an option. Yeah, it was amazing. The elbow was beautiful. Yeah, shout outs. I I do have to give a shout out to Mac Molly on on Twitter, Mac Molly MMA, who called it the cartel bow. And um, I know some people will probably, you know, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's hilarious. I know the UFC might not ever do it because of uh, politically correct reasons, but I think I think that shit is awesome, and I got to give him props for being clever with that, calling it the cartel bow. Um, I like it. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. It'd be even better if he was from like Sinaloa or like a real, you know, fucked up place in Mexico. But yeah, that it's still pretty good. Um, Co-main cowboy submits. Mike Perry in the first round and that picture of him, you know, belly down, breaking Perry's arm in half, went viral uh, in his hometown of Denver. Also, again, the 25th anniversary. Um, what would you think of this one? I didn't expect it. Well, yeah, wow. we, both, <laughs> we both picked Perry last week. Wow. I, good for Donald. I mean, that picture, that amazing picture, uh, yeah. what he did to Perry, too. Like, so much fury. And just yeah, he was angry. And, fury. and and for some reason, it, like, makes you feel good. You're like, fuck yeah, Donald. Like, get it, son. Like, you you earn that for some Although he's breaking this dude's arm in half, like, you, you felt it for him. I think even if you're not even a big cowboy fan, you just felt it, like, that was awesome. Like I, I, I feel you there, man. Yeah, it was, you could totally tell in his face and just everything leading up to it. Him talking about personal issues with you know the gym on Joe okay. Rogan's show and wow, that, yeah, that was amazing. And then his speech afterwards of like you know that he basically did it for his son. That now he, he has something new to fight for, and just looking at his son's face, he just took it personally, like. Like you're taking food away from my from my kid's mouth, and that animal, you know, that animal side of him came out. Like that's, it's it's brutal, but it's visceral, and it's like poetic in a way. It's like everyone can relate to that, even someone like me who doesn't have kids. Like, yep, I totally get that, man. Good for you. That was that was an awesome, awesome performance. And although this, I don't know what if he's heard it or seen it or what he thinks but I do think it's just funny that Mike Perry is now saying that he doesn't really click with Jackson Wink and that he might leave now I don't know I guess I guess it could be just Perry him just being young in his career and looking for something better or maybe what Donald's been saying this whole time is true and that they really don't give a shit about fighters anymore and they're just trying to get any Anybody in there that can give him money? 
Yeah, he. I don't know. He. I don't know if you read one of his the uh, the articles about it, but he's talking about. Well, maybe I might have him in my corner. Maybe I won't. It's just strange. <sighs> Okay, are you gonna leave or or not? You know, you're you don't really click with this person, but you're still gonna have this person in your corner. Is that good for your career? Uh, you mean Perry? Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I I don't know. It's I don't know if he's still living in Florida. I mean, I know he's from Florida, but it would make sense for him to go to ATT or um. I know the Black Zillions aren't there anymore, but the new what is it, Combat Sports or whatever they're. I forget what the name of it is. Where what Hooft is doing now, I would think he would he would do good there, and it'd be in his in his home state. Or just but, get get out if it doesn't click. Why even have this person in your corner? And he was talking about how that fight wasn't about him. You know, it was about. I do find it odd, like, and I I wonder if he just had like a brain fart of to take him down. Like he's just like, oh, this is. Let me try and take him down, just because fuck it, why not? Or if they drilled it into him, like, you got to be more well-rounded. You should try takedowns. You should do this and that. Which, you know, is good advice if you're a novice, if you're like a beginner who wants to learn how to fight. But when you're Mike Perry and you got dynamite in your hands and your elbows and your knees because the dude can basically knock you out with anything, um, it just seems weird. I I didn't see see anything of the corner calling for it. I I think he went for it on his own, but I I wonder if he went for it because he thought it was necessary or he wanted to show off to his corner that he's actually can grapple. I don't know, against a guy like Cowboy. I don't know if he forgot that he's a a submission artist as well. You know, it was just, it was strange. He went for that. I, 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 part of me thinks that if he was at any other camp, he would have never done that. Well, I guess that's what happens when you don't click, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. It's um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know. It, it just maybe they try to change them too much. There's, there's so many things that can happen between a fighter and a coach. So you, you agree on things and you don't, or well, a coach know. that knows the opponent very well too. So they probably tried to. That's true. Overcoach him. That's true. That should have been an easy fight when you have all the all the knowledge on your side, literally. You know, they've been training this dude basically since the jump. Mm-hmm. Too much coaching, too much information, all this bullshit in the background going on too. And yeah, yeah, I mean this should have been this should have been Mike Perry's fight to win, and we kind of all said that. Like there's so much shit going on with Cowboy. Even the stuff like with his family, even him having a kid, he'd be like, Hey, well, who knows? Has he been sleeping much? You know, the kids waking up, you know, in the middle of the night for for bottles and shit like that. I mean, just being typical parent stuff, uh, that can wear on you. But then, yeah, all the stuff, the bad blood with the gym and him being on the losing streak. It was his fight to, to win. It really was. I don't care what you say about the matchup. You know, all the other factors weren't on Cowboy's side, and yet he still won, which is what makes it awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I also want to add a quick word about uh, Macy Barber. Um, I'm not sure how much you know of her or have you seen this one, Rain? Mm-mm. Okay, so Macy Barber, uh, one of the first women to come off of the Contender Series. Um, I've I've known about her for a while. I followed her on LFA, and uh, she's a uh, she's exciting. She's fun. Um, she's very young, which is a uh, a very uh, it is a good thing, especially in the women's divisions. There's there's room to grow, uh, and she's a straw weight, which might be the best division in women's MMA. Um, she got a she got a TKO, uh, also in her hometown of Denver, or at least Colorado. She might not be exactly from Denver, but you know, main car spot seems like the UFC is really high on her. Really wants to get her in some prime positions. She called out Mackenzie Dern after the fight. Um, I guess they were supposed to fight back in the day at LFA or something and never never happened. I'm not sure what what the exact story was, but I, I think that's that's what happened if I remember correctly. But I don't know. I just wasn't although the performance was pretty impressive, you know, she cut her up, you know, got the got the canvas real bloody. 
uh, got a TKO win. It was a brutal, brutal stoppage, but I don't know. I'm just not that high on her. Um, and although you haven't seen her much, you know how good fem- you know women's straw weight is. I, I, do you think a girl, a 19 year old girl with a taekwondo background and some some decent grappling skills, do you think she can make waves? Do you think she can fulfill her? And this is, you know, her dream of becoming the youngest champion of beating John Jones to become the young, the youngest champion in uh, in UFC history. Wow, um, I think she can, but there's a lot of top fighters in that division. I mean, you know, there's I mean, so many. Look at the role that Andrade has been on, and I, I mean, I think she's gonna fight Rose next. I, I don't think there's anyone left there, and. I, I mean, I favor her to win there, but that that's exactly my point is like Rose is seen as, you know, I wouldn't say untouchable because I don't think anyone thinks that like she can't be beaten. And obviously she has been beaten before, but I mean, she's the bee's knees right now. People love her, but I think she will be an underdog in that fight against Andrade because that's just a bad style matchup. And if Andrade wins, you know, I, Andrade isn't unbeatable either. Like, I don't see her winning. I, I see it a lot like men's lightweight. Um, n- you know, if you see a, uh, the lightweight division in the UFC, I think the most anybody's ever defended the belt is three times. No one's ever gone, even BJ Penn, no one's ever gone on, like, this extended winning streak, though this GSP, you know, eight, nine, ten title defenses. And it'll. I, I'm of the belief that it will never happen. Even with Khabib, that's one of the reasons why I don't understand why people are so high on Khabib. Um, yes, obviously he's very talented, but the numbers just aren't on his side. I know he's undefeated. I know he's dominant, but that division, that division is so competitive because that's where most male athletes, most people in this line of work are going to be. There are way more people I light lightweight than there are at light heavyweight or heavyweight or flyweight. This is where most people go, the featherweight, lightweight, welterweight area. And I, I believe still to this day, light, lightweight is the most populous division. And I think that's kind of how strawweight is too. I think most women who are trying to fight, um, I think 135, 145 is kind of big for for a lot of women. Um, that that want to compete in this, but and then 105 is a little too small. I think 115 and 125 is where, you know, most women can do can do well. That's not too big and not too small. So that's the problem that I see with this weight. And then the other thing is that Macy has a uh, has failed to make fit weight at least once, but um, she is a big girl. I don't, I don't know if she plans on moving up at some point. Um, especially soon because um, uh, I'm almost certain that she'll go up later on in her career because that just seems to be a thing with most fighters, especially women. But I don't know. It, I'm just not very, very high on her. Or at least I just I'm not high enough to believe her hype because everyone's calling her the future, taking her own self-appointed nickname of Macy, the future barber, or whatever she calls herself, but I don't know. I'm just not on board yet. Yeah, that division is so tough. I mean, just the top five alone, and then now you have Rose too as the champion. So, I mean, that's a. I, she's only 19. She's going to learn. I mean, she has enough time, but to beat John Jones's record as the youngest champion, I don't think so. Yeah, that'd be quite a feat. Um, well, then we have this is a very packed fight for a uh, very packed weekend. I'm sorry, very packed weekend for fights. Um, and there is a UFC card, and we'll get to that in a moment. But there's a few other cards happening, and uh, I want to open up just saying a quick word on LFA. Uh, LFA is having a fight tomorrow, actually here in Costa Mesa, and not too far from uh, from LA, from my hometown. Um, they're going to have a fight here, and it's also a female fight. Uh, flyweight champion, Sabina, the Colombian Queen Mazo, 
Um, she she's going to be defending her belt. And if you guys haven't seen her, um, you should just type in Sabina Mazo highlights on Google or on YouTube. And um, this chick really does seem like the next Holly Holm. Um, she kicks the shit out of women. Literally, her her head kicks are ridiculous. And um, what I find most interesting about her is that she trains with Cordero at Kings MMA, which is obviously an excellent gym, but she doesn't fight like a Cordero fighter. She's very technical, very methodical, takes her time, you know, chooses her shots, uh, fights out in the open. She's not this brawling, come forward fighter. She's, she's very smart. And, um, her head kicks are lightning quick. So there's always just this, this tension in the air when she fights. Cause, uh, it, it, it almost takes me back to like prime crow cop where you, you know, it's coming. The left high kick is coming. It's coming. And you're just, just wondering when, but um yeah, if you, if you have a, a access TV, you should definitely go out of your way to check it out because um uh, Sabina Mazo is someone I've been very, very high on for, for a while. And um yeah, she, she, she brings the violence. So you should check that out. Um, Bellator is also, um, I believe it's tomorrow. Yes. Bellator is also on tomorrow. They're fighting and, um, the event's happening in Tel Aviv. And, um, given that it's overseas, it's going to be tape delayed as, um, they like to do. But, um, the main event is really good. Patricio put bull versus, uh, Emmanuel Sanchez. Um, uh, Reen, you don't know too much about. Uh, or do you know much about Pitbull even? Some, Some. but yeah, Bellator, it's too hard to follow them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. Um, Patricio Pitbull is very, man, he's one of the most exciting fighters, especially outside of the UFC. He's, he's, uh, he's pure dynamite, that kid. But this, uh, Manuel Sanchez guy, he's, uh, he's, he's no joke. He's no joke. And, um, I think he can. I think he can take the title. I don't know if he's likely to do it, but um, yeah, that should be a that should be a good fun fight. Um, Phil Davis is fighting uh, this Russian guy whose name escapes me at the second. Oh, Vadim Nemkov. He's fighting him. That should be excellent. Especially if you're not a fan of Phil Davis, it, you you should watch because there's a high probability that Vadim Nemkov will beat the shit out of him as he did to Liam McGeary because he is a legit, legit striker. And I also have to mention that um, Cindy Danzwa is fighting. And I know, uh, at least I believe that most of the <laughs> MMA world is not fond of Cindy because of her excellent striking prowess. But I love this chick. Uh, and I'm not even sure who she's fighting. I don't know this girl, but Cindy's always fun, man. I'm I'm more of a striking fan than a grappling fan, but there's something about Cindy that I always like fighting. She has such a big personality, and she's just like the biggest overachiever in uh, definitely in women's MMA history because she's fought a lot of women and beat a lot of good women given her inability to strike and her inability to want to learn how to strike. I just respect that as the shit out of her for just saying, I'm a grappler, I'm going to grapple, and I don't care if I look like a five-year-old striking, I'm still going to beat your ass. I want to watch it because of her. I forgot that she uh, posted something regarding her fight. So, well, yeah, yeah she's, I, I posted it on my Instagram picture. She um, she dressed up like Harley Quinn for the weigh-ins because she always dresses up. She has that, like, Roxanne Modafferi thing about her. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's one of those things that, like, she had one fight in the UFC, and I'm kind of glad that she's out of it because she's always entertaining, even outside of the ring. And, you know, the UFC tends to uh, tends to take your personality with the – with the Reebok fight kits and whatnot. So keep an eye out on Cindy. Uh, keep an eye out for Cindy because um, at least to me, she's very entertaining. And I think, I think any real fight fan quote unquote uh, can get behind her and 
see what I see of just how, what a weird enigmatic figure she is. Um, we'll get straight to the UFC though. UFC is uh, having their first event in Argentina, and um, it's going to be between Santiago Ponzinibbio, the Argentinian, versus uh, Neo Magni. Uh, before we get to that one, though, I want to run by two fights. The opening fight is probably the one I'm I'm most excited about, and the one I have my eye on the most is uh, uh, Cynthia Calvillo versus uh, Poliana Botelio. Um, long layoff for Calvillo with her uh, marijuana suspension. Yeah, it's like we went back to 2010, where you could get suspended for weed. Um, but her, what was it? She won like, she was what, three and one last year after only having like two professional fights. I mean, she was on a, she was on a streak there until she lost to, to Sparza. Uh, but this girl, Pollyanna Botelio, I've been high on her for the past couple of months. Um, I think she can be a future champion if everything lines up right for her. And I think the UFC did no favors to Calvillo to book her against Botelio. I I wouldn't be su- surprised if she gets a first or second round knockout. Oh, wow. I was thinking the same thing. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's Calvillo. But this girl is tough. So, oh, man. It's going to. I'm actually excited about that fight, too. I think more than all the other ones now that I think about it. Now well, I'm shuffling through everything. It's straight up striker versus grappler, you know. But the thing about Botelio that I think people are overlooking is that it's not just her size. Um, Botelio is a big girl. And I think Calvillo is, I wouldn't say she's undersized, but she's definitely not a big straw weight. Um, so there's the size uh, discrepancy. But Botelio is not easy to take down. Um I mean, it was a boring ass fight, and although she's got way more exciting, and you know, it, it was a different time, but still, Pro Gonzalez is a very good wrestler, at least, a, at least a pretty decent grappler, and she couldn't do shit to Botelho. She held her up against the fence and lost because Botelho was just stuffing everything and just beating her up with elbows and knees, and I mean, she really couldn't do anything. She just had her flustered even though she was pressing her against the fence, like Botelio is a different kind of animal. And um, I I think this would just be a really, really exciting fight. Maybe not fight of the night because uh, Calvillo may just keep going for takedowns and Botelio might just stuff him. Or, I mean, it's always possible Calvillo gets an early takedown while they're both dry and she sinks in a choke or something. But I think that's going to be so much easier said than done. I'm, I'm really... Really excited for this one. I think if Botelio beats Calvillo, she's and she's definitely in the top ten, but she might even get a top five or six opponent for you know for the next time out. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with that. Because I think the next whoever wins this should be in that title contention, correct? Um maybe well, no, I'm not like number one contender. No, uh, but at least definitely top four tr- or five ish. Yeah, going into that direction. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's gonna be an interesting fight. It's never bad to have good contenders, especially in a Austin division like women's strawweight. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get to the co-main though. Uh, Darren Elkins versus Ricardo Lamas. I feel like this is a fight that happened like eight years ago. And I actually looked it up to make sure it didn't. And, in fact, it hasn't. And it has not happened yet. Um, but it's a good fight. Darren Elkins is uh, possibly one of the toughest men on the planet. And Ricardo Lamas is a, on, a bit of a, on a bit of a decline right now. Just kind of hard to know how bad the decline is. But I don't know. I have a feeling this fight can be... Really exciting because Elkins can just take it, and Lamas has a habit of getting in a brawl sometimes. But I also feel like it can be kind of boring because Lamas can just decide to grapple sometimes just for the hell of it. And uh, Elkins is a grappler by heart, and sometimes just in that nature, it just can be just a dominant one sided decision. But 
I'm just having a tough time picking a winner in this one. What, what do you think, Green? I think it's going to go to a decision to to llamas. You, man, that's I just spit that out. By the way, <laughs> and I'm an Elkins fan, but it's just man, he's been taking too much damage, and his name is the damage. I mean, that's true. That's true. With the you, most horrendous tattoo I've ever seen in my life. Right, and you can't even you can't put him away. You can't. So it's going to go to decision, and I think it's going to go the other direction. Okay. Yeah, I am. I don't know. I mean, I guess Mirsad Bektic took Lamas down. I mean, I don't think Lamas, he can't not be out wrestled. He can. It's not easy. And Elkins is not a very good striker, but I don't see him getting put down either. Um,. He know. takes a lot too. He takes what two and three shots and for what? I, I might I might have to side with you, but I I, I just have a feeling about Elkins. But it really is just that because I I don't know the with the striking advantage going to Lamas. Like I I think that's enough at least to outpoint him. Mm-hmm. And if he can just hang with him on the ground, like if he takes Elkins down at least once, it should be good enough. And then. If Elkins does, you know, if he stuffs the takedowns, great. And even if he doesn't, if he takes him down once or twice, I think he can at least hold his own on the ground. So, yeah, I'm going with Lamas, which I kind of hate because uh, nothing against Lamas. I'm, I actually like him, but Elkins is just such a warrior that it pains me to go against him in any, in any way. Yeah, I feel the same way, but just looking at this, I think it's going to go the other way. Yeah, I, I get it. It, it is, it is, <laughs> it is. You know, people like I said, people are kind of sleeping on Lamas because he's been on a bit of a decline. But Styles make fights, and this may not be the prettiest fight, but it does seem like a winnable fight for for Lamas. I, I, I think you're right. Um, we'll get straight to the main event though. Uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio and Neil Magny, as I mentioned earlier, five round welterweight fight. Uh, Ponzinibbio's home country. Or at least one of them. I know he, I believe, is part Brazilian. But um, yeah, debut in his home country, headlining. A lot of pressure for the guy. Uh, this fight, um, I'm also kind of having a hard time with because Neil Magny is so well rounded. You know that he he has no real holes in his game. But from what I've noticed. He seems to struggle with specialists and on the feet and on the ground. I mean, Damian Maya just strangled him. You know, he he dominated him from literally from point A to point B. There was not one second of that fight he won. And he got submitted. But then there's guys like like Lorenz Larkin. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> like Lorenz Larkin. He got obliterated in that fight against him too purely striking and like under under around just got the shit kicked out of him and Ponzinibbio is he hits like a truck but also I remember his fight against Mike Perry he used a lot of footwork a lot of lateral movement he played it really smart in that fight so I think if Ponzinibbio I mean so long as he has the endurance I I think he could win the decision it it won't be easy because Magny does not get tired but I think if he uses some decent footwork and he can, you know, just outstrike him, I think he can I think he can win the decision and then his power is never to be slept on. He can knock out Magni, but that's that's a bit of a rarity. You you really have to put knuckles on the kid cuz Magni's tough as shit. Um am I wrong, Rain? What what do you think here? No, I but you think it's going to go to decision? I think it could. Um, yeah. I don't. I'm not ruling out a knockout because Bonzinibio, you know, like I said, he hits fucking hard. But mm-hmm. Magni's so tough, and I, I think he'll win some rounds. I think Magni can take him down, maybe in the first or second round, maybe in the fourth. You know, I think he can win some rounds by taking him down, or or maybe just you know out jabbing him, just playing it kind of smart. But I think so long as Bonzinibio is is um. Is disciplined. I think he can he can win a decision if 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 he's disciplined and if he 
really wants to put it on him and get risky, he can probably knock him out. That's what I was thinking, actually, because he's a pressure fighter. Yeah, I mean... Constantly putting on the pressure. So with Neil... But then again, you don't want to do that with Neil Magny because of his cardio. I mean, you got to remember... Here's the thing with Magny, too, is like he beat the absolute shit out of Carlos Condit. And this is coming from possibly the biggest Condit fan in the world. I mean, he just styled on him. He yeah, made that's Condit. true. I know, I know he was rusty. I know it was a long layoff. I know, it, but I mean, he made it look so easy. And mm-hmm. and I don't care, I don't care if that was a long layoff. I don't care if Condit's on the decline. That was still really impressive. But I think it also had to do with Condit that with him being rusty, he wasn't sure. Like, I, I think he wanted to strike with him, obviously, but just couldn't get his timing. And then Neil just like, well, I can take you down. And Mag, you know, Condit's not a really good takedown. You know, take down defender, so he just he just did his thing. I, Magni just seems like one of those guys. If you have an opening, he'll take it. And from what I've seen, Ponzinibbio has good takedown defense, so I think that's going to be a tough. You know, he's already going to be fighting uphill there, and uh, his striking is good enough where I think he can hang with him. But I don't know if he can hang with him, you know, for an extended period of time. And if he does get cracked, I, I'm not 100 percent sure he can he can take it and keep going. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is tough. I'm like I said, it's it's tough. I'm really I'm going upon Zanibio just because of what I've seen, um, how good he's been looking. But I am not counting out Magni, Magni at all. I'm I'm really not. He's he's tough as hell, and he tends to do this. He tends to surprise you when you least expect it, and sometimes he tends to fail when you think it's a favorable matchup, but. This is why it's kind of tough to call, but just like I said, because of what I've seen, I'm I'm going with Ponzinibbio by, I think by decision, but a, po- a knockout is is possible. I'm gonna go with Magni. Magni. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Magni by submission. Two. Wow. Well, yeah, Magni does have Magni does have good submission, so that is a good choice. And now that is now two main events where we where we where we differ. You won last week with uh, Rodriguez. I remember you weren't sure, and last second also picked Rodriguez and ended up winning that one. Yeah, this one too. I was, I was really going for Ponzinibbio, but I, I no, I keep staring at Magni, and I'm like, no, I can't. Just everything yeah, and he's then, done in the past, and no. And then you got to remember too, like he beat Gaslam when he was on a bit of a run in mm-hmm. Mexico too. So I mean, it's not as not a Gaslam's backyard per se, but I mean, he is Mexican. They were putting him there to shine on him like hey you gotta so we thought an easy opponent in your uh your backyard so to say and and he lost you know a lot of people thought it could have been a draw or maybe he could have won but at the end of the day he lost magni's just one of those guys that when the pressure's on he 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 toughs it out man he he rises to the occasion he's not he's not a uh he's not a front runner by any means and that's why I respect the hell of that guy. Yep, and there's really no pressure on him. You know, he's going down there. Yeah, so, yeah. So. Yeah, and then, I mean, I've, I remember when, I know they're they're not the same country, but I remember when they went to Chile earlier uh, in the year, and um, that was like, what was his name, Diego? There's a guy from tough Latin America who's Chilean, who fought on that card? Who man, that card, that that crowd went insane when he when he got up to fight. And I can only imagine Argentina just being so patriotic as well. It's gonna be like some Brazilian type shit when when Ponzinibbio fights. Oh, that place, yeah, definitely, it's gonna erupt. Yeah, it should be crazy. They go crazy over soccer, so. Yeah, I mean, it's just I think it's just South America in general, but yeah, yeah. definitely Brazil. Argentina, Colombia, they just seem like they just seem like those fans are just savages, you know. Right? They're so loyal, super yes. loyal. Yes. Yes, you know, that's something that's usually missing here for for better or worse, but yeah, that's they get it right in that sense in the in the sporting aspect of of rooting for your guy no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Rain, so uh I think we're going to 
We're going to call it a night with this one, episode two in the books. Uh, hopefully people stick around. Hopefully people like the first one. And um, you keep sharing them as you have. And um, as always, you can find me on Twitter at Juice underscore MMA, Reen at Fox with you on Twitter and Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. That's correct. All right. So um, that'll be the show for tonight. Hope you guys enjoy it, and um, we hope to see you next week. See you next week. Bye.